and welcome to This is Metal with Tom Collier. I am Jason J. Rock Houston, and uh, Tom, I'm going to let you um, do the introduction, um, since you and Rhino are pretty good friends, and you're the one that um, got him to come on the show. Let's talk about your guys' friendship and history, how you guys know each other. Well, we know each other through Scott Columbus, Man of War, and stuff like that. I had actually played with Scott, and then Rhino actually replaced Scott, correct, Rhino, in Man of War? Yeah, uh, 19, wait, 1990. Actually, I was in the band. I started in 89. Wow, wow. That's going back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't <laughs> remind me, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh. so it was great, but the Rhino is actually going to come in and be guest drummer with Held Hostage November 11th as we do a salute to America. It's going to be a great night, man. We're really excited to have you play with us. Well, thank you. I'm excited as well. So how, did that, how did that come about, Tom? Talk a little bit about the show and, and why you wanted Rhino to take part in it. Well, it's all through John John Pettigrass and our good friends, and John manages me, and he introduced Rhino and I. Um, and I needed a drummer, and like he's, he said, he's the perfect drummer for it. And Rhino's actually, his wife is from Oswego, New York, which isn't far from there. And I hope while they're up, they get to visit some family while you guys are here. And, and to have them come in, you know, I mean, we know Rhino's patriotic, believes in God. Oh, follows, yeah. You know, follows lots of things in the world and just... Uh, Yep. He's just a perfect fit for us to sit in and help us out, man. And of course, everybody knows Rhino, of course, through his history with Man of War, as, as you touched upon. We'll get into some of that. But uh, Rhino, why don't you let folks uh, know why you came on the show? What are you working on now? Well, uh, I do a lot of recording, a lot of home recording. I have a studio at home. So I do a lot of, you know, some uh, some bands are, will call me or get in touch with me and like from Europe, you know, want me to do some recording for them. Uh, and, um, like I said, uh, I do a lot of recording and Tom and his, uh, organization there want me to do some recording for him. And, uh, that's what I'm doing right now. More than anything is just home, home recording. What's yeah. your new record though? Angels of Babylon is coming that's out nice. yes. Yes. next year yes. on Fire Rock Music Group, right? 2024 release. Talk yeah. About that. Yeah, I, I I formed Angels of Babylon back in 2000 and let's see, let me think now, 2010, 11, 12, somewhere around there. And uh, uh, just a, it's a, th actually it's a three piece band. It started out a four piece with a lead singer, drums, bass, guitar, but a uh, singer quit and I couldn't find the right replacement. So I decided I would sing because I did all the demos. So I thought, well, We'll just do this, the Phil Collins thing, the, the singing drummer thing, you know? There you go. Yeah. There you go. I think that's actually the first time um, you've seen that, like, in a, in a real metal band. I mean, um, you got everybody from, you know, uh, people see singing drummers. You know, Don Henley, of course, from the Eagles. You see yeah. Roger Taylor from Queen, Peter Chris from right. Kiss, just to name a few. So um, are you yeah. going to actually be behind the drums singing? Are you going to, like, do the Phil well, Collins thing? Uh, I have there? been. I I've done a lot of shows. I've done a few tours out in Europe with with me, uh, you know, playing drums and singing. But the last time I was out there, um, I actually was out front, which yeah, I yeah. really, really love to do because I'm, I'm, I'm a closet front guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I really like that. I had a drummer play. And um, you really go on YouTube. You can find some of the videos up there. But, yeah, that's what I really like to do. I got a new album coming out. I have uh, two complete albums, uh, Kingdom of Evil, Thunder God. And the newest one is called Aquarius. Coming out on Fire Rock. Yeah, brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can't wait. We're, we were excited to sign you. We were really Thank you, man. Band. I mean, so the history of the band, you started off with Dave Elveson on bass, correct? Yeah, yeah. Dave Elveson with Megadeth was actually on bass. I, I met him in Phoenix. I was doing a studio session there. And I just asked him, I said, hey, man, I got some demo songs and, you know, I'd like to form this band. He said, yeah, why not? Let's do it. And um, he was really, really excited about it. In fact, a friend of his is one that came up with the logo. And uh, but all of a sudden, you know, uh, he went back to Megadeth right at that same time. Yeah. And um, we got uh, uh, another bass player after the, after him. And we just kept cool. moving forward. Who's and the current lineup right now? Right, right? right now, it's Ned Maloney on bass. He's with, he was with Jack Starr. And uh, Alex Stevens, he's a guitar player from Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, I knew him when he was 15 years old. He couldn't even play guitar. But now he's like this massive killer guitar player. But back, but the, the music you're coming out now has got Alex Stevens and it also has um, Kevin Burns playing guitar. And I have two other guest guitar players on it. 
And, um, but that's, uh, but I also have even some newer music coming for the next for 2025. So, but yeah, nice. I'm just, like I said, I'm just moving forward, man. Just keep, keep going because I, I love to write music and I love, I love to play. I love my drums and I'm going to do it forever, I guess. And like you said, um, you're, you're kind of a closeted front man being, a, being behind the drums all those years. And, um, a lot of drummers have that desire to get up on stage. Um, what, what's that been like for you? I mean, um, you know, also being the front man, um, you have the added responsibility of communicating with the audience, you know. Um. Well, I'm glad that you asked that question because I absolutely love it. I, I think I'm a really great front man. Yeah. I, I really do. I, I think of myself as a great front guy yeah. because I'm not goofy. I'm not squirrely. I don't, you know, do a lot of acrobats. But I feel like I portray a really, you know, a, a strong presence. And I, and I like to... Um, I just, I like for people to get involved in my songs and the lyrics and, you know, but uh, yeah, I, I love it, man. I, I've, I've been playing drums for so long and I still love my, my sure, instrument. Sure. Yeah. But uh, my dad was a singer and um, I used to sing in his band. So um, yeah, being out front is, is great. I love, and actually there's actual photographs of me instead of like a symbol in the way or a symbol stand or a tom, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? <laughs> And I imagine being the guy that wrote a lot of the songs, you know, um, you have a be better understanding of, you know, how the songs should sound and um, how they should be performed. Do um, you, you think you'd be a little more critical of uh, somebody else singing the songs? Yeah, I think I would because it, honestly, I always had a specific sound in my head that I wanted to sound like. It, it had to be very specific. Yeah. And I, I wanted, I wanted more of that manly kind of like Dio yeah. sound than, sure. than that than that kind of high pitched, you know, like Jeff Tate, though, although I love Jeff Tate, but that's the sound I'm going oh, for. Dio, he, he's one of my, my all time favorite. Uh, Me too, uh, he's my favorite. You 100%. know, and, and I gotta tell you, last time I seen Black Sabbath, um, you know, before he died, um, of course called Heaven and Hell, but you know, um, amazing to see this little tiny guy on stage and this powerhouse voice, you know? Yeah, yeah, amazing. Love Let him. me ask you, Tom, um, how did you, um, how did you come across um, this band design? I mean, uh, and what did you think of the the music when you heard it for the first time? So uh, John Pettigrass brought it to me and um, I absolutely loved it. And I said, who's singing? He said, Rhino. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? He's a drummer. He goes, he goes, I'm booking him as a singer. I said, wait, wait a second. Let me, what do you say here? I said, that guy, he's got a hell of a voice. And I, I was just really, he yeah. says, you should have a singer new album. I already had a singer new album. I said, Let's have him play the drums on it. <laughs> but I yeah. said, man, yeah, I was well, very surprised. You know, uh, I just, um, it's not, I, I, like I said, I still love playing drums. Oh, I, sure, do, sure. I do love playing drums. But it just gave me an opportunity to express myself in a different way. Well, I love, st I love stories like that, you know, that, I mean, the fact that people know you, the drummer, all these years, and then um, you put something new together, and it's not exactly what people would maybe expect from you. I, I think that's kind of a cool aspect. And, I know as a fan, um, you know, it's followed Manowar over years that I um, I definitely can't wait to get the record for a simple fact that you're singing on. You know, I can't wait to hear it myself what it sounds like. You know, right on, man. Yeah, yeah. great. It's a great album. I think everybody's going to be surprised. I think it's going to do very, very well. We're excited to sign Rhino. Very excited to sign him. You you kind of been sitting on this music, but um, and you've already got some more um, plans for the um, future. But as far as taking this on the road, what are your plans for that? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, very good question. Uh, I work a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm a working class dog now, man. You know, I'm, I, I just, I work, you know, I mean, I, I kind of, I say to people a lot of times I'm semi-retired, although I necessarily don't want it to be that way, but, uh, the way the, you know, the way the climate of the, the business is, it's, it's kind of, almost kind of forced me to, to be in that position. Yeah. Um, I would love to tour. I would yeah. love to tour again. I'd love to play full time again. But it, honestly, it, it, one it just didn't, it, it just didn't pay the bills like I wanted it to, to do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it I mean, let's be honest. The music business is not like what it was back in 1989. I mean, let's yeah. just go back to when you joined Man of War. I mean, those are some pretty big shows and you get up in the costumes and everything and um, putting on mm -hmm. the ultimate ultimate show you know it's quite different than that but um and again mm -hmm. back in 1989 you didn't have the internet i mean we still had like um 
all the all the uh, mainstream like magazines, Metal Edge, Circus Magazine, whatever you were looking yeah. back. You know. Um, that well, it's just like I said. It's um, I've got myself in a position now where I'm, I'm pretty comfortable. Yeah. And you know, th there's a steady paycheck, man. Every it's, it's a st steady money. You know, and I'm not necessarily motivated by money, but you know, money does. No, but hey, let's get the you know, pay the bills, right? <laughs> yeah. you know? So, and and honestly, uh, you know, I, it's just the way it is. But I would love to play. You know, I would love to be in a position like I watched these guys with Megadeth. You know, this guy Kiko, guitar player. You know, here's the family uh, dressing room. You know, here he takes his family on the road. He's got his own dressing room. He's got his own this. He's getting brings that. You know, the guy probably makes. Yeah. I don't know how much, you know, but that's the way it is. That's that's the way it is for some of these guys. And that's the way it would have to be for me if I was ever to do that full time. I gotta ask you, Rhino, how did you get how did you get that nickname? I, it's pretty cool to when people give you a nickname and it sticks. And and I love the fact your name is kind of like um Dio, you know, just just one name that people know right away who it is. Uh well uh here's how it here's how it really went down. I get off the airplane for the first time in New York to meet up with Joey and David at the airport. And Joey, the first thing he says to me is, from now on, your name is Rhino. I hate that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I said, okay. Well, he just had this idea because when I play, he said, man, he says, when you play drums, it's like a, it's like a stampede of rhinos. Okay, cool. <laughs> And again, like I said, it's one thing to give yourself a name, but when somebody else gives you a name and it sticks, I mean, um, uh, that's just super cool. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's the story. <laughs> that's very cool. So, so Rhino, um, why don't we talk a little bit about your, you have a, a, a rock symphony that I got to listen to some of that. Incredible. Oh, you got to hear some of that? I did. I was able to get some of the play. It was incredible. Now that's, nice. you wrote that all yourself? I write all music, every, everything. I wrote all the Angels of Babylon, all the Shadow Symphony stuff. I write every single note. You know, Let's so. talk about that a little bit, though. That that symphony was incredible. I mean, what yeah, was that thanks. about? Wow. Thanks, man. Um, that was a story I, I just thought of when I, you know, uh, I had a lot of dreams. And uh, I thought, you know, this would be a cool time to write a story about vampires and ghosts, and, you know, the undead. Um, I love a Romeo and Juliet type story mixed in there. So that's, you know what? That's basically the story. It's a Romeo and Juliet story with vampires and ghosts in it. Oh, how, <laughs> so, how metal. I love that. Wow. Yeah, the, the, the couple, you know, one, one the kid can't get out in the daylight because he has the photosynthesis disease, you know, where you can't get out in the daylight. And he's in love with this girl and this 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 vampire couple kills her and he's mourning her and wanting to be with her and thinking about killing himself and she comes back as a ghost and tells him you know stay you know to to stay alive and keep living and you know all this whole thing's going on between this this you know and the, and then the, the the kid falls in love with the girl vampire and it wow. just gets crazy but yeah if you listen to it from the beginning to the end i think you'd be pretty Pretty shocked, pretty impressed. The recording's a little, little iffy because that was back when, hey, I got this new recording studio, you know, this little eight track, and you yeah. know, I'm trying everything, and it's just, you know, a little odd. But the, but the energy and the vibe is there. So I mean, I, I, if, anything, if anything, you guys should, you should seriously consider like at least releasing on the internet or something, like an internet release or something, some special kind. Yeah, of I yeah. wish I could, but Joey DeMeo gave me a, a pretty substantial amount of money for it, and now he owns it, and now I can't do it. Ah. <laughs> but that's you know, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's all no, right. That's 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 fun. <laughs> yeah. 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 So so that's let right. me ask you, Rhino, who are some of your influences as far as drummers that kind of um were your, your heroes growing up? Yeah, Michael DeRozier with Heart, uh John Bonham, Tommy Aldridge, Steve Smith yeah. with a Journey. Sure, sure. Yeah. Big time. And so, wow, wow. So, um, Angels of Babylon. Now, that's a cool sounding name. Um, that that's definitely like nothing I've heard before. How did you come up with that? Um, actually, the the uh, the, the thought was, well, you know, <laughs> this is Babylon, and you know, we we can call ourselves angels. You know, so we're here as angels in this Babylon yeah. that we're living in. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. And so, is that your studio back there? I see some, I see some equipment back there. Oh, you see some stuff? 
Yeah. You see, my, drum, you see my drums? Yeah, the drummer's layer, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I, I think that's a uh... chair. You're going to stupid office chair in a way. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Those are my, uh, yeah, they're, they're kind of chrome. Right. Kind of like, the, like I was really into that, even though Man of War had them already. Right. You know, that was my thing. I love the chrome, chrome drum set. Really dug that. And I got some Man of War posters right. and things back there and uh, some goofy pictures there on the wall. And, that's cool. That's cool. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So let me ask you, Tom, um, you know, you guys know each other a little bit. Um, and I'm sure like a lot of us, you listened to those Man of War records back in the day. Um, what was it like to listen to this guy play on records to actually knowing him? And uh, what was your impression the first time you ever met uh, Rhino? Well, it's going to be great. Our actual first time personal meeting yeah. will be November 11th. We spoke oh, wow. Wow. Before, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and he's coming up to play. And like I say, you know, Scott Columbus actually recorded on my last album. Sure, the sure. Thing he did before he passed away. Yeah. And then Rhino replaced him. I, I'm just excited to meet him. And then when you hear, when you guys hear Angels of Babylon, I, that, that Aquarius album, it's a killer album. I'm just so excited to get that released out there too. And it's just, and you have, do you have an official release date for the Angels of Babylon or we, are you working on we, that? We're working on the date. It's going to be in 2024. We'll get it figured out and we'll put it on the, we'll put it on the calendar to get it released. But yeah. And, and I'm curious if you guys have talked about making a music video or anything for that. We haven't talked. That would to, be cool. Go ahead, Rhino. That would be great. I mean, I've never, I've never made one for any of the records. I don't know why. Just not really. Not that we didn't want to. Just never got a chance to. But yeah, it chance to, yeah, yeah. Really good idea to do something like that. Yeah. And so, Rhino, you've been living with these songs, you know, because I, I remember hearing about Angels of Babylon um, quite a few years ago. Nothing. I get. I don't. Did it get released in Europe or something? Or. Yeah, the first record uh, was on. Um, uh, I can't remember the name of the label. Some, Anyways, German, yeah. some yeah. German label. The guy was real cool. Yeah. Uh, and it did pretty well, man. Um, the second one was released on Scarlet Records, which is an <clears throat> Italian label. And uh, that did really well as, also. But um, after that, now Fire Rock. Yeah. Yes. So, <laughs> so this is the third album. Now, Tom, any chance that you guys would be able to release a back catalog or do other people own the rights to that? Uh, I, that would be up to Rhino, but we would definitely would talk to him about that. You know, yeah, I, I, we'll, we'll 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 talk about that. We'll figure that out. But I think the cool thing is, you know, if once this new album drops, people here in the U.S. start to maybe get to know what the band has done before, and and by the time you guys maybe do do some shows, you have three albums worth of material to kind of put together a set list. You know? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we've been playing locally a lot. Well, not a lot, but we have done quite a few shows here locally because, you know, we're kind of like local local heroes around here. And they 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 like the music a lot. And, you know, we get out there and, and um, man, it's it's a great response. Is there much of a hard rock or metal or even rock scene there where you are in Florida? Yeah, I mean, in, in this area, there, it, it, I think it was better about 10 years ago. It's OK now, but. Certainly, the the West Coast is much more active. I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and, um, and you mentioned um, you know you do, you do a lot of recording and and you're a working musician and and that's great because you you get to do different types of um, the, these projects. But um, I also I still imagine a lot of people just when they call you, like just based on your work, you know, your history and stuff you've done before. Again, just based on the name, hey Rhino, we hey hey um. We would love to have you come play on our stuff. I mean, a lot, a lot of these gigs, you probably don't even have to audition for. You just get based on what you've done before, right? Yeah, that's 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 pretty much how it goes. I mean, I, you know, um, I have a reputation of, you know, playing really fast and fast double bass, that sort of thing. And of course, you know, a lot of these guys they like that kind of stuff. Because I can't really play like that anymore. <laughs> Not really, you know, because I, you know, I've gotten older. I don't play that way very often. See, that's, that's the cool thing about being uh, moving up to the front of a band because, I mean, um, you've got the ability very much like a Phil Collins. I mean, you look at uh, um, Phil Collins, I mean, he's, he's close to 80 years old. I, I, from what I understand, you know, he's damaged his hands so much all these years of playing, he can't even play the drums anymore. And yeah. I think he's at least able to get up there and sing, you know, God, uh, God willing. But yeah. it's got to be cool for you to kind of um, be able to move to the front of the band. Okay, I'm doing something different, but it's fun, you know? Yeah, like I said, I... I 
I, I, I'm not going to necessarily say I like it. I enjoy it more, but it's definitely a, another way for me to express myself other than sitting back there and yeah. going into this trance, you know, uh, which kind of was kind of where I'm at when I'm playing drums, you know, I really go into this thing and uh, with singing, I can actually see people, for sure, you know, yeah. see their faces, approach, you, know? you know, and see their, see their expressions when there's a certain part of the song coming up, or if I say a certain line or certain words, you know, um, that's what I really like. I, I really enjoy that. I mean, you, you know, let's be honest, when people go see, see a band in concert, you know, most of the time that you're able to see the, the the bass player, the guitar players, the singer, the drummer's the guy in the back of the stage. Um, yeah, yeah, and, that's a drag. <laughs> but they can hear you. They know you're there. You know, you're keeping yeah, the peace. Sure. Yeah. But yeah. you know, it's interesting because you you look at guys like uh, Janie Lane from Lawrence, Stephen Tyler from Aerosmith. Obviously, the, these all these are guys that also started out as drummers and then they became famous singers and songwriters later. That's true. I just hope I'm not too old. I mean, I I, I don't know. I, hey, like, what else are you gonna do, right? <laughs> I, I guess you're never too old to rock and roll, man. But uh, you know, I, I I'm I'm always gonna be. I'm always gonna enjoy it, and it's always it's it's part of me, you know. Yeah. So uh, I guess I'll always be doing it, man. I just say like this, you know. Um, if Mick Jagger can do it at 81 years old, you know, yeah. you're over near that age. I mean, so you know, I, I think you got many more years left in you. <laughs> right on. I hope so. <laughs> Rhino, I'd like to talk about another project that you have going with an old man of war cohort of yours. Don't you have something with David Shankel? Aren't you guys yeah, doing Yeah, that's it? right. And so so let's, let's, let's talk about that stuff. Yeah, know? yeah. Me and Dave Shankel are doing a project together called the uh, Kings of the New Kingdom. And this is where I'm writing five songs and he's writing five songs. And that way you get kind of like our, you know, our personalities, you know, how we write and who we yeah, are, yeah. you know, and uh, uh, I just thought, you know, I, I brought it up to him one day. I thought it's time for us to do something together, man. So that's what we're working on right now. He's sending me some songs and I'm sending him songs and, you know, well, we're collaborating like crazy and trying to get drums down, trying to get rhythms down. And we're also probably, well, not probably, but we are getting some different singers different people to come in guest singers i'm going to sing a few songs and i'm having daniel uh daniel bate from um uh the sons of odin it's a tribute man or tribute band. he's a great friend of mine uh he's gonna sing maybe one or two songs and I love that. see how it goes you know i love bands like that where there's more than one singer now um let me just put this out right now rhino it's been great getting to know you and, and having a chance to talk to you today for the first time um I'm just going to put it out there. Um, me and Tom would love to have you back anytime. You're always welcome on this show. Um, I'm thinking when the project with David Shankel is um, getting ready to get off the ground, we'd love to have you uh, and him come on and anybody else involved in the project. That'd be uh, great. be great if we had uh, me and Dave on. Dave, I don't know if you've met him. That dude's well, yeah, I, I, met, I haven't met him in person, but I, I've had a lot of, uh, done a lot of <laughs> interviewing with him over the years. He's, yeah, he's great. In fact, um, I'll tell you a funny story. Um, I used to do this show with another with another co-host, but he was unable to do the show anymore. He, he informed me one day, and and I I'd interviewed Tom several times, and he was one of the first people I thought of to um, have as my new co-host. And um, David Shankel calls me up one day, and because um, Tom had asked me, I'm getting ready to do a show. Would you mind? Uh, you did an interview with me. And I said, Oh, sure. What I did not know at the time is um, Tom had set up this uh, to bring up some other guest on the interview, which made it a real fun interview because I didn't know anything about this and. I'm at work one day, and, and David Shankle emails me, and he's like, "Oh, oh, hey, by the way, um, Annie's going to be Annie's going to be on the interview you're doing this afternoon." I'm like, "Annie, who the hell is Annie?" But, but long story short, it's somebody Tom Tom knows, and um, he arranged um, Annie and Ethan Brosh and a couple other musicians that was going to be at the show that he was doing that night um, to come on, and it just made it made it a fun interview. Long story short, and so um, David Shankle, in some small way. Played a role in Tom being the new co-host here on This Is Metal. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Hey, yeah. you met you mentioned Ethan Brosh. You know, he was the first guitar player in Angels of Babylon. Oh, wow, wow. Yeah. So, so uh, did he just um, did he go on to other things? Or yeah, he just uh, you know sometimes musicians that's just the way they are, man. They they it, just it's move on. on paper, right? And, and people, it's like uh, people still read about stuff like that. Oh, it's a super group. <laughs> 
Yeah, they, they, I think it was on Blabbermouth, something like that. Hey, we got the super group with Ethan Bras, you know, David Elson, you know, Rhino. But, um, yeah, Ethan, I think one of my favorite guitar players, um, the first time I seen, uh, I talked to him, um, interviewed him a couple times. Um, I did this interview with Tom a few months back. Like I said, Ethan was on the interview. Super cool guy. I mean, to me, yeah. if he had been around in the 80s, he would have been a much bigger star than he is now. Um, He's definitely people know who he is, but I, I think um, he should just he should be like Warren D. Martini or some of these guys from yeah. India, you know. Um, yeah, I agree. I agree. I love the fact that he's still out there doing it, you know. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Wow! Wow! See, see, Ryan, you, you have all these great guys coming in, in and out. And let me ask you now, um, with you doing the singing and stuff now, um, when you bring another drummer in, um, like to Angels of Babylon, do you kind of allow him just to kind of do his thing or? Um, yeah, yeah, I I have the the band is the Sons of Odin band, or like I said, the tribute, the Manowar right. tribute band that I go out and I do stuff with. Uh, 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 they actually are the band Angels of Babylon in Europe. Yeah, those yeah. guys, and I just tell them just you know just relax, just do what you want. You know, it doesn't have to be stiff. But man, those guys they learn the songs. I mean, perfect. You know, <laughs> perfect. Yeah. And and again, I think what makes um, this project angels of babylon so cool is you had different people come in and out of the band over the years and 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 yet it doesn't seem like again you read on paper initially ethan frost david elson super group but i think my point i'm trying to make is that when you can have different people come in the band and, and they kind of do their interpretation it shows you that the songs are really powerful that, that anybody could kind of come in that's a decent enough musician and and tackle the songs yeah, and uh, um, <laughs> speaking of musicians, I, I also have a, a cover band here in Florida, and and the bass player is Mike Lapon with Symphony X. Wow, 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 you got some, you got some um, heavy duty friends there. Yeah, Mike yeah recorded, man. Yep, Mike recorded with Hell Hostage before too. Yeah, we toured with him. He recorded on the. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah, Mike recorded uh, "Show Me the Way Back Home" with him and Joel. Joel and Turner were singing. Mike was on bass. Another song called "Take Me Away." Yeah, I'll have to mention that to him. I'm gonna see him Saturday him. night. We got a show Saturday night. <laughs> I toured with I toured with Mike when he was with Ross the Boss. Yeah, I know. I, love I was I was with Ross when he was in the band. Yep. Uh, so you had left, and Steve Bogneese was drumming with him. You had left. Yeah. The band. So we did a United States tour with those guys. We had a blast with them. What? What? Oh, you did the you were you were touring with them. We toured with them. Yeah, we did a U.S. tour with them. Oh, yeah, how did you like that? We had a blast. It was so much fun. Actually, Ethan Brosh was the opening act, then held hostage, oh. and um, then Ross the boss. But our bass player went down right before the, the before we went on tour. The week before, he had a blood clot in his leg. So we took Ethan's bass player. I sent him the stuff in Europe. You probably know Giorgio, right? The, I don't. I don't. Well, Giorgio was Ethan's bass player, left-handed. We didn't have a bass player, so we grabbed. He would wow. play with Ethan, go upstairs, change his shirt, come back out and play with held hostage. <laughs> Yeah, that's was, cool that's great man that's good to hear time. mike lapon yeah, right. was you ever heard of the, the dictators oh yeah well you, you know who their drummer is now um the legendary uh albert bouchard super super talented guy oh is that right yeah yeah, yeah. Albert he's a great drummer yeah yeah he is so, so, I'm, i gotta I'm, i gotta say tom unless um there's anything else you like say thank rhino for coming on the show today it's been really uh great having an opportunity to do this and and um I feel like I'm just getting to know you. And like I said, that's why already I'm going to tell you, you're welcome back here anytime. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I will. Yeah. Angels, Angels of Babylon. It's going to be a big hit. I'm telling you, everybody's going to love you guys. So I can always say, Tom, you know, next in the new year, when, when that album drops, whenever we're going to have him back and if any of the other guys in the band want to come on, they're more than welcome. Absolutely. Thank you, Jay. And we yeah, should have time. Dave Shankel on here too, before they release their next album too. Together. Yeah, man. Yeah. Absolutely. And, 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 and one more thing, Rhino. Um, we got we got a couple of shows already um, waiting to be posted that we've already recorded. But um, I'm gonna when I know the date that this is gonna be posted, I will um, I will get that to you. Right on, Jay. Thank you. Okay, and then you're welcome to post it. But thanks for coming on, and you, you take care. Okay. Take care. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rhino. See you, thanks. see you in November, Tom. Absolutely, looking forward to it, man. Me too, buddy. Take care. Take care.